My name is Terry, and I'm here with Saved by Nature at Alum Rock Park. And I wanted to give you the inside scoop on all the folklore and interesting things you can see. If you've gone to Alum Rock Park in the last hundred years, you've probably noticed this bridge. In fact, you've probably driven over it. This park was actually founded in 1872, and it was known then as the Reservation. Alum Rock Park is the oldest municipal park in California. It was named after a large rock formation believed to contain alum. And even after it was discovered to have been incorrectly identified, the name persisted. Next year, this park will have been around for 150 years. And it was once a very popular recreational destination known for its mineral springs. Don't be fooled by how they look now. These are once beautiful Victorian era grottos. Alum Rock Park was once home to a beautiful indoor swimming pool called the Natatorium. People came from all over to go swimming here. Inside the Natatorium was this huge slide and it didn't have any running water. So every third kid had to go up with a bucket and dump it down in order to make it slippery again. And they used to have a sign at the top that said, do not go down head first. So what do people do? They go down head first. Well, if you do, you hit it at just the right angle to whip your swimming suit right off. So at the bottom of the slide, they always had this cute little bucket full of towels for people who lose their suit. The Natatorium fell into disrepair and was torn down in the 1970s. But one of the common ghost stories is that sometimes you can still hear the children playing. And on certain nights in fall, you can actually still smell the chlorine. The gazebo is one of the oldest structures in the entire park. It's been there since the 1800s. A long time ago, they actually ran water from the mineral springs to this gazebo so that you could actually taste from four different springs. Now, they used to play tricks on kids and they would tell them, go get me a glass of water. And they wouldn't tell them that you have to wait for it to off gas because this water is mineral water and it's full of things like sulfur. So the sulfur has to off gas um, before it gets drinkable. So don't fall for that trick. Nowadays, you can still get water out of this fountain, but it's city water, not mineral water anymore. If you call the park ahead of time, you can even work with local artists and learn how to do things like this, painting with light. If you drive into the main area of the park, the second bridge that's a little pedestrian bridge will take you to the ranger station. All throughout the park, there are interesting things like this. This is behind the ranger station and was once an old cellar belonging to, we think it was a cafe that used to be there. So you can find evidence of this history all throughout the park. You can also find this historic log cabin. It began construction in 1914, and in 1916, on September 24th, it was actually dedicated to the city of San Jose by the native daughters of the Golden West. It's made out of redwood logs that came from our very own Santa Cruz Mountains. Did you know that once upon a time, Alum Rock Park actually had its very own carousel? Over by where the Youth Science Institute is now, there was once a place called the Alum Rock House. It was actually a hotel, and it was run for years by a man they used to call Big Red because he was over six feet tall and had bright red hair. During your adventures today, you might actually find remnants of the Victorian era when people used to have all kinds of exotic plants and animals in their gardens. This is an ironwood tree. It's a remnant from such times. It's not native to here. All through Alamog Park, you can find these beautiful western sycamore trees. You can identify them by their beautiful bark. It looks like something from a paint-by-number artwork that you might have done as a kid. Nowadays, western sycamores are becoming an endangered habitat. So seeing plants like this is a rare treat. Look at that, it's actually starting to grow little tiny peppercorns. Hmm. A lot of times people use these trees because they grow really fast. So if you need shade really quickly, this is the tree to do it, but it does make an awful mess. Back in the late 1800s, 
Alamar Park actually had a beautiful aviary full of all kinds of exotic birds. Later, it actually became the Ramada. So this is the site where it used to be. A long time ago in this very spot that's now paved over, there used to be a tree and they called it the hugging tree. So if you got lost, this is where little kids were taught to run to and hug this tree until their parents could come and get them. At the end of the parking lot, you can come through and there's another road that actually goes up here. This used to be called One Way Road because you could drive in and out this road that goes up the top. If you decide to hike out One Way Road, it'll actually take you to the top of Allen Rock Avenue. So I'm down here at the bridge at the bottom of the parking lot, the innermost parking lot. And what I want you to see is that as you go up the hill there, you see that flat spot? Almost a hundred years ago, there used to be a lookout there with a beautiful gazebo where you could actually walk up some steps and check out the view. All throughout the park, you can see signs like this of volcanic activity. So at one time, these lines were horizontal. And this is thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago of silt and clay and sand all layering on top of each other and becoming rock. But over the years, volcanic activity and uplift of our tectonic plates has caused them to tumble and turn and twist and end up being these beautiful rock formations. So what is this thing? This is actually a mineral spring grotto. Inside these rocks is a hollow chamber and that chamber fills up with mineral water. And back in the day, they used to have a little spigot that you could actually turn and the water would come out. So you could choose to go down into this bath and soak in these mineral waters. Many people believe that they actually had restorative properties. Hey, take a look at that. These are actually stalactites. These formations are caused by calcium deposits that ride the water and get stuck to the surface. These could be hundreds of years old. Features like this are man-made and absorbed by time. If you stand here, you can smell sulfur coming up from the earth. These springs are actually warm because the tunnels that carry the water go really deep into the earth. A long time ago, there used to be a grotto right here. One day we noticed there were a whole bunch of dead birds around it and we thought, oh no, some kid's probably shooting them with a pellet gun. So we staked it out and we looked and what actually happened was as the birds came up and drank out of this mineral water, they fell over and died. So we had to come and get a sample and send it to the water district. And we found out that there was naturally occurring arsenic. So it's been covered over just to keep people safe in case anybody were to try to drink it. See if you can find this spot in the park. The Upper Penitentia Creek has a lot of this interesting plant growing in here. We think it's watercress, and we think that somebody actually deliberately put it here back in the 1980s and 90s in order to be able to harvest it. It's kind of hard to believe that at one time people also used to eat cattails. Hmm.
some of these waterways are deceptively deep. It may not look like much here, but back in the early 2000s, a ranger actually did get a snorkel and was able to get underneath some of these areas. So be careful if you do get in there, there could be ledges that you don't realize are there. The hillside here used to have a cave in it. It was an attraction back in the 1800s. And they said that Joaquin Murrieta actually fled from the Spanish and hid in this cave with his horse. From what I understand, back in those days, if you got into trouble and you were under the age of 25, you had an option of going into the conservation court. You would work, be taught a trade, but really you worked really hard. And you would build things like this, like they could teach you how to be a stonemason and build structures like this. The bulk of your paycheck actually was sent back home to your parents. I find Allen Rock Park to be one of the most spiritual and beautiful places in the entire state of California. This is actually the oldest municipal park. It was created in 1872. Try to imagine people walking through here in Victorian era clothing with parasols. Hundreds of people here every Sunday listening to music. Nowadays we get people that are exercising, enjoying the property with their families and their kids, and having all kinds of adventures not even realizing how far back this history actually goes. Come and feel the peacefulness for yourself. <laughs>